The mining industry is often under challenge to demonstrate the benefits to uh, the producing countries. Uh, it's quite easy, of course, to, to demonstrate the need for, for minerals and metals in our modern societies, but people often criticize us on the grounds that this comes at a cost of, of environmental impact and social impact. So addressing the, the social impacts and making sure that local communities really feel the benefits of operations, which come, of course, through employment, education, training, capacity building, and so on. But the wider uh, desires of populations is, is very important to a license to operate in a country. If you look anywhere in the world, basically, and look at, at how you encourage the creation of, of small and medium-sized businesses, which after all are what create the, the bulk of employment, because major operations, major mines, create employment at a certain skill level, but in relatively small numbers. Uh, the, the barriers, are, there are many barriers. Uh, First of all, the, the barrier is the first barrier is find your entrepreneur because you need somebody who has a, a, a belief who wants to to do something. So you need, I think, techniques for going out and, and finding who actually has the ideas. Because one thing we're quite plain is that we in corporations do not have all the ideas. Mining companies do not know about small and medium-sized businesses. We learn, but but. Uh, that's not really our main occupation. Uh, secondly, of course, if they have an idea, the, the, and companies like ours can help with that because by working on our supply chain, so we can say, look, these are some things we need, you know, could we set up, help set up a, a, a business to do this? Then uh, access to finance is, is very difficult. Uh, and, and this is a very important issue, I think, because it's no good setting something up with preferential funding which builds a kind of dependency. The funding has to be fundamentally commercial. The other big barrier is actually standards, because in, in this world, in supply chains, people are always questioning, uh, you know, quality of suppliers, conditions of work in suppliers. And there's no way these small businesses are going to meet international standards from day one. So I think a lot of effort has to go into uh, trying to make sure that, that one can supply training and support to these suppliers to, to raise their standards. Otherwise, if we impose standards absolutely ab initio immediately, you're on to you know, international suppliers, affiliates of large companies, and you'll never grow the, 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 the small businesses. And this is, an, uh, I think, a, a real issue, and it requires a lot of, of thought how it should be addressed. South Africa, for example, Mondi have, have done this initiative with, with waste paper collection. Uh, so having entrepreneurs who collect the paper, which addresses an issue for us, it addresses our supply, but it creates a, a business for them. And if you travel around South Africa, very often you'll see these folk with a, a barrow or something. Quite often they employ other people, so they have a network of subcontractors, as it were. Uh, so that creation of the, of the demand and providing a customer base and that customer base can then sometimes extend beyond the supply chain.